In this video, we're going to do the first problem from the budgets and cash flow practice in your lab book. And um, basically, we're going to see one way that you can create a budget. And I don't know if you all have a budget for your personal finances or not, but I would definitely strongly recommend creating one. And we're going to show you one example here in this lab book. There are a bunch of other budgets you can look at and research and duplicate. Um, my personal favorite guy is Dave Ramsey. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with Dave Ramsey, but he has a lot of really great like intro to budgets and people just starting off and learning how to finance and be smart with their money. So you know, look him up on YouTube or something uh, if you don't know anything about personal finances, or maybe if you want to create a budget and get control of your personal finances, that might be a good place to start. And again, there's plenty others. I'm not um, definitely not paid to endorse Dave Ramsey by anybody. He's just helped my family. So again, in this video, we're going to do the first problem from the budgets and cash flow practice, and then there's two more for y'all to do for practice. And in our budgets for this class, we're going to have basically two main columns. We're going to have a monthly income column, and it's going to list out our different sources of monthly income and their amounts. And then we're also going to have our monthly expenses column to show how much we're spending on a monthly basis and the amount. And for this class, we're going to prorate everything monthly. So if you get one payment per year, we're going to divide it by 12 to basically average out your monthly income and split it up evenly. Again, we're keeping this class pretty simple, so everything is prorated as a monthly basis. So it says Lisa earns $1,600 per month from her job. So that's an income. That's money she's making. So I'm going to list out that she has a job and she makes $1,600 a month. She also receives a scholarship of $1,500 twice a year. So that's other money coming in. So for scholarship, it's $1,500 twice a year, so that's every six months. So I'm going to divide that by six to see the monthly amount that she gets from the scholarship. Again, we're prorating it. So if it comes in twice a year, it means every six months she gets this chunk again, so I'm going to divide it by six to see how much she gets on a monthly basis. So she gets $250 a month from her scholarship. All right, she has monthly expenses of $500 a month for rent. So it's now $500 a month for rent. Uh, utilities, she has $120 a month. Uh, her gym membership is $30. And $110 for insurance. Her weekly expenses are $65 a week for groceries. So since that's weekly, um, we can either take it that there are 52 weeks in a year and then divide that by four to get the monthly amount, or sometimes people just take it and multiply it times four weeks in a month to get the monthly amount, but I personally prefer to multiply times 52 and divide by 12 because most weeks have more than, or most months have more than just four weeks in them, and if you only budget for four weeks, then on the months that you might have like four and a half weeks, it can get a little tight. So I'm going to take her weekly amount of 65, multiply it times the 52 weeks in the year, and then divide by 12 to see how much she should spend on groceries per month. Again, some people would take the 65 and just multiply it times 4, but I prefer to do times 52 divided by 12 because most months have more than exactly 4 weeks. Which I must say, she spends a lot on groceries. My husband and I together spend 300 a month on groceries and eating out. So she's eating quite a lot if she spends 281 all by herself on groceries. All right, let's see, what else do we have? Um, gas says so she has $35 a week. So I'm going to do 35 times 52 divided by 12 to see 151.67 for gas. Uh, college expenses of $3,000 twice a year. So again, that's twice a year. So she's going to have to pay this every six months. So I'm going to divide it by six to get her monthly amount. And then she takes her cat to the vet once a year for 75. So I'm going to divide the 75 by 12 to get the monthly vet expense. All right, so now what we want to do is come up with the totals. So I'm going to sum my income. And then I'm going to sum my expenses. What did I do? Oh, I forgot to equals. That's what's wrong. Undo. 
here we go. So equals sum my expenses. All right, so the last thing that we want to do is calculate our cash flow. And what cash flow is, is it's our income minus our expenses. So for our cash flow, we see that she has basically an extra $150.42 left over at the end of every month, and she could put that money towards clothes or towards savings or whatever it is that she needs to spend her money on. But this is good that she has a positive cash flow because that means she is not spending all of her income on a monthly basis. She has a little bit left over. And so again, this is how we do budgets in this class. We just set up monthly income and the monthly expenses and list everything out. And then we calculate our cash flow by looking at the total money coming in minus the total money coming out and hope that's positive and you're not overspending and putting yourself in debt.